Uh, hey everybody, Rob Nelson here with uh, the second of 52 things and today we're talking about editing. Editing, editing, editing. We're gonna up our game. I wanna make you faster and faster at editing your videos. I mean, this is all a little bit of a game. If you're charging clients money, then you gotta get through it fast. Or if you're making videos on YouTube or Instagram, then you have to get your videos out quickly. I like to think that I'm a pretty quick editor. I've been doing this a long time. Time. 2000, I guess, was the very first time I started on Adobe Premiere. And then I switched over to Final Cut. Then I switched back to Adobe Premiere just recently. It doesn't matter what you edit on, but what I want to talk about today are some basic principles. In fact, all of it is keyboard shortcuts. When it comes to proficiency and speed when you're editing, you have to be able to edit with your fingers. You have to be able to forget about the tools that you're using and start thinking creatively. And when you can start doing that, and your edits are going to go extremely quickly. I feel it's one thing a lot of people don't do, especially when they start. Now those of you who, are, who have been doing this for a long time or who use it more professionally, you might already be doing this, but you might like to see this keyboard shortcuts that I use all of the time. Now I'm not gonna talk about some of the basic ones like ins and outs. I picked out 10 or 12 that I use all the time that I don't think maybe everybody uses. So let's just kind of work through this and see how it goes. Now the first thing to realize is that you gotta understand where to get to the keyboard shortcuts. And there's a shortcut for that. <laughs> Option Command K. Now one of the things that you'll notice when you have these keyboard shortcuts set up is that you can choose Adobe Premiere Pro default, your CS6, or if you came over from Final Cut Pro, all of those have keyboard shortcuts that are different than the editing programs. So I like to customize my shortcut, and so I have one called Rob. I don't wanna give you a recipe, say D does this, and A does this, and one does this, and two does that, because if I do that, then you're not gonna understand the process. The process is what's important. I'm gonna show you which things are the most important things maybe to put into your keyboard shortcuts, and then I want you to integrate them yourself. And now I can go through and I can edit at will and then save them as needed. And what we can see here on the keyboard shortcut is that it labels everything. So it'll let me know what my one is, and my two, and my three, and my four, and my five. Um, uh, or eight, for instance, if I just click on the keyboard eight button, it'll tell me that for me, that renders out the entire work area. So I just hit eight and I go let it render. And you can add things. I don't really have a keyboard shortcut for the rolling edit tool, but if I click here and I wanna say, I don't know, make it C. C is now my rolling edit tool. I'll undo that because that's not what I use. This allows you, if you forget, pop it up all the time and figure out what your keyboard shortcuts are. Or one of the things that I do is I write them all down <laughs> when I'm learning in my notebook. You can see here, all of those are my keyboard shortcuts. So I try really hard to always use a shortcut. Now I know that when you're trying to figure out an edit, uh, one of the things that you'll do is you might go up to your menu and start rolling through the menu and when you find one, say, uh, for instance, you want a new project. Well, I will go up and be like, okay, new project, that's ah, that keyboard shortcut. Or a new sequence, Apple N, okay. Well, and then instead of just clicking on that button, I'll come down off of the menu and I'll hit the keyboard shortcut for it. That way I start remembering it. And if it's something I use all the time, I write it down here in my book, which I keep next to me as I edit. It doesn't take you very long to figure out what those keyboard shortcuts are, but as you're learning, that's really important. So I pulled an old journal here to show you. Let's just pump through them one at a time and I'll show you how I work with them. Okay, over here on the left-hand side, I have all my clips. Well, one of the things that you can do is while you have that clip selected, I have set the keyboard shortcut S to create new sequence from that clip. So right there, you can see it created a new sequence and then down here, that is my new sequence. So one of the things that you'll notice is that when a lot of editors edit, they edit completely with their fingers on the keyboard. Sometimes you'll use the mouse, but oftentimes you don't need to. So for this one, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Uh, you have J, K, and L, and that plays you forwards, L. Really fun thing for you to try. Double L, faster. Stop with the space bar, or K. Back with J. So right, so that's how I do it. And then I have my hands over here set to cut and edit. So for me, three adds an edit. 
anywhere right here that you have selected. So anywhere in video one, A1, A2, and A3. Okay, then we'll just play it forward. Now this is all blank space, so I'm gonna wanna cut this out of there. In the past, I might have taken my razor blade tool, hit cut right there, gone back to my selection tool, clicked that little section, uh, deleted that section, selected everything in the back, moved it forward. Oh my gosh, that was so many clicks. If that's what you're doing, you gotta pay attention to this video. Let's undo all that and I'll just show you how I do it now. Playhead sitting right there. I just wanna trim off everything from where the playhead is to the previous edit. So for me, I have the keyboard shortcut one. So I, cause I just have my hands up here on one, two, and three as I'm going, right? So one, trims me right back up there. Okay, right there. Now two trims everything to the next edit. So one, two, and three I use all the time, but that's because I set that up. Nobody has that as a preset. I do have shortcuts set up for the razor blade tool and the selection tool. For instance, I can hit B and that gives me a razor blade. I hit A, that brings me back to the selection tool. But if you're editing just with your hands and you don't wanna click on a particular clip, well then the easiest way, like say I wanna take out this middle section here, right? So that's the one I want, right where the playhead is. I hit D, that selects the clip, and then I wanna delete that clip. Now if you just hit delete, you see it just takes it out and doesn't pull the rest of the timeline forward. Because I really liked Final Cut Pro and I got used to that magnetic timeline, you wanna ripple edit, okay? So let's undo that. All you have to do then is D to select it, and Option Delete, Ripple deletes everything forward. So as I'm going through on say an interview, I'll just sit there and listen to it and at the places that I wanna make that cut, my hands are doing all the work for me. So super easy and probably something everybody should be doing. Now the next thing is inserting clips into your timeline. So let's go here. I have a couple of time lapses that I took. Um, uh, this one in particular <laughs> is really cool. It's, it's our time lapse, so I hit I for the end point there. Okay, and the end of that was about right here, so we out on that. And then, instead of having to click on this and drag it into my timeline, I use uh, insert edits and overwrite edits. And those are something that I would hope everybody is using. And for me, I have uh, put those to Q and W. It's kind of a rollover from what I got used to with Final Cut Pro. For me, Q drops it over the top. You see right there? Now it's basically just B-roll over the top. And if I wanted to just take that timeline and spread it out and insert it, then I would use W. So two different ways that you can basically be working with your stuff and dropping them in without having to physically drag and drop that footage. So super quick and super easy. Now one thing that you'll have to pay attention as you're doing that, if you look over here, so right now it's gonna put the video track here and it's gonna put the audio track here. So if I was to undo that and say put it up here, then what happens is it adds the video track up there and the audio track. Down there. Now one thing that you will notice is that this was a 4K time lapse. So up here, I had it in 4K and you can see the whole frame. When I dropped it in though, it's quite cropped in. What I would have to do normally is click on that clip, I would have to go up here to effect controls, I'd have to go to scale and I'd have to like bring it down so that it finally matches up perfectly. And that just took so long all the time until I realized there's a keyboard shortcut for resizing it back to the uh, size of your timeline. So now all I do is I hit four and that is the shortcut for resize. Okay, now the other couple things that I use always, I add crossfades to things. So I just have on my keyboard six and seven set up for video transition, six, seven for audio transitions. Okay, and now let's just say I'm ready to export this to Instagram or something like that. I basically will zoom out and wow, I have a lot of clips here. <laughs> Usually I'll, I'll add in and out points to where I wanna edit things because sometimes I only wanna say a minute of footage, so an output there. And then when I export, I have it set up, Command M. That brings up the export dialog box and I have, then I just hit enter and I go. All right, I hope that was a good introduction into the world of editing and trying to speed up your editing workflow. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of things that you all use as keyboard shortcuts, but I don't have to list them all here because you can create your own starting with those keyboard shortcuts. I hope that made sense. Maybe you take some of those buttons that I use, integrate them into your mix, 
But remember, it's all about customization and getting faster as an editor so that you can be thinking about it creatively instead of having to be using the mouse and clicking around and then forgetting what you were wanting to do. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Special thanks to the patrons out there who helped support this episode. Really appreciate it. It's allowing us to make 52 of these, one every week, so that if you follow along, hopefully at the end, you become a better filmmaker, a photographer, a better storyteller, that's the point. Because you don't have to be doing this as a profession to get something out of it. That's why this particular episode is framed at editing. If you were an editor, you probably wouldn't need this, but I wanted to like introduce you to this world of editing. All right, and next week, you're gonna love this. I am surprising Jonas for his birthday. So Jonas is about 20 minutes out. He's coming. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous. Here he comes, we gotta make, we gotta sell this. He's turning 40, I'm flying to Sweden, and we have this huge prank planned. What the doing? fuck? <laughs> I made it! So follow along, get, get on Instagram, follow me at Untamed Science and Jonas at Behind the Science. We're gonna be posting some of the behind the scenes of that because this is a little bit delayed, so it's gonna be happening right when you get this message. And you will see it all in the next video. I'm really excited about it. He has no idea we are gonna surprise him. Whew. Let's hope he doesn't find out. All right, we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.